Wu Jun is from Anhui and now lives with his wife in Wujiang District, Suzhou. His wife works in a textile factory, and their child is taken care of by grandparents in their hometown. He has been driving an Iveco minibus in the freight transportation industry for three years, specializing in running shipments in the Yangtze River Delta region, including Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Shanghai. When the COVID-19 outbreak began in 2020, Wu Jun chose to work as a delivery driver. Over the past three years, he has invested more than 150,000 yuan and has replaced three vehicles. Despite strict lockdowns during the pandemic, he insisted on delivering goods to make a living. He said, it was actually easier to work during the pandemic. The country was under strict control, and many people were afraid of the virus and didn't want to work. So we had an easier time. At that time, Wu Jun faced many difficulties during deliveries due to lockdowns, and he also experienced a 14-day quarantine at home. Although he lost 7 or 8,000 yuan, the freight fees he earned for each delivery were high. During the pandemic, prices were high, and shippers voluntarily added extra fees. Normally, a job that would pay 200 yuan would be increased by another 200 yuan, and then even more, sometimes up to several hundred or even thousands of yuan, he said. For example, during the severe outbreak in Shanghai last year, when it was Suzhou's turn to deliver to Shanghai, a shipment that usually cost 260 yuan was increased to over 10,000, 20,000, or even 30,000 yuan. During the three years of the pandemic, factories and other businesses continued to operate, allowing the freight transportation industry to sustain itself. Wu Jun said that he took a break and went back to his hometown during the Chinese New Year this year, but when he returned to Suzhou after the 15th day of the first lunar month, he saw a completely different scene. After the 15th day of the first lunar month, there were no more jobs. I thought that the pandemic was completely over this year and that business would be thriving. But suddenly there was no work at all. It was like night and day between before and after the new year. Kanshan in the Yangtze River Delta used to be known as the world's factory, but in recent years, foreign funded enterprises have been withdrawing one after another. This year, Foxconn, which has been in the area for nearly 30 years, will also transfer its production capacity to Southeast Asia, and Kanshan's past glory is no longer there. In Wu Jun's view, it is not only Kanshan, but also foreign-funded enterprises in Suzhou have withdrawn, and the impact on the local economy is self-evident. Kanshan has indeed lost many factories this year, as well as in Wujiang, Suzhou, and many factories have left the entire Yangtze River Delta region. Once foreign enterprises withdraw their investment, it has a great impact on us. All those small factories and stores that support it. Basically they are closing down and moving out, we will definitely have less work. We mainly serve those small factories that support the upper and lower levels, and send goods to them in large factories. If the large factories are gone, the small factories definitely cannot survive, and we will have no work. The freight market this year is not even half of last year's. We cannot even reach half of last year's level. Mainland media reported in 2017 that Jiangsu province carried out industrial restructuring in Waxi, Suzhou and other places around Taihu Lake to control the water pollution, and closed and transformed many small chemical and printing and dyeing factories with high pollution. Wu Jun said that Wujiang district in Suzhou is mainly focused on the textile industry. Textile factories have basically moved to northern Suzhou, Henan, Anhui, and some to Xinjiang. His wife's textile factory will also have to move sooner or later, and now they're taking it day by day. Wu Jun revealed that after three years of the pandemic, many factories have gone bankrupt, and those that have survived are not doing well. However, after the pandemic, there were a large number of newcomers looking for jobs, who were tricked by intermediaries into coming to Suzhou and Kanshan to find work, causing a situation where it's difficult to find work in factories, overcrowded with people, and low wages. Given the current situation, it's impossible to work for another three years. I should change my career this year. My old profession is repairing cars, so I'll either continue to repair cars or find another way." Wu Jun said helplessly. He just bought a new car and has to pay back the loan with 2,000 yuan per month for three years. Every day, Wu Jun leaves his home at 8 o'clock and goes to the industrial park, where he believes it is a feng shui treasure trove, opens his phone and tries to grab orders. However, now there are times when he can't grab any orders for a whole day. Now, the price of freight is too outrageous. Even the price for Didi's ride hailing service is not as high as theirs. On the 28th, I had a shipment from Taizhou to Shanghai, with a distance of 350 kilometers, and the platform price was set at 610 yuan. 
it's still not as expensive as Didi's, which is at least 1,300 yuan. According to Wu Jun, the current freight price has dropped from 4 yuan per kilometer to just over 2 yuan per kilometer compared to before. There are too many people doing freight transportation, really too many, and not enough work to go around. There are many more vehicles than cargo. For example, there may be 10 tickets of cargo in a day, but there are 1,000 vehicles, so the number of vehicles is far more than the amount of cargo. Fang Ming, a driver who has been doing freight transportation in Zhao Qing, Guangdong for 4 to 5 years, also directly told reporters, it's not easy now, there are just too many people and not enough work to go around. The order allocation mechanism prioritizes distance. For a single order, there may be 10 people competing for it, and then the platform will filter through a system. Fang Ming lamented, every industry is very competitive, but this industry is the most competitive one I have ever worked in. For example, if you want to accept an order, sometimes there may even be a hundred people competing with you, can you imagine? Finally, Fang Ming is also very helpless, unable to find a good job, and now just living day by day. According to reports from mainland Chinese media, in February of this year, Huo Lala and Xia La Chuxing jointly held a huge national employment season recruitment event in Shenzhen for 2023, claiming that the two companies would provide 300,000 flexible job opportunities during the recruitment period from February to March, causing drivers to compete crazily for the positions. In December last year, freight drivers in many parts of China went on strike to protest against platforms lowering shipping prices. Driver Lu Hong from Benbu, Anhui also expressed that the post-epidemic freight market has plummeted, which is related to the international situation and the Chinese economic environment. Orders start coming in around 8 o'clock and we work until it gets dark. We can make a few hundred yuan, but if we're unlucky, it could be only one or two hundred, or even nothing. In the past, the freight rates were reasonable and there were a lot of orders, but now the rates have decreased, there are a lot of cars, and the orders are few. To grab an order, there are at least 10 people grabbing together now, and sometimes dozens of people. The number of newbies has increased by at least half compared to before. Finally, Lu Hong said, if conditions permit, you can switch to other industries. It's better to leave this place of right and wrong as soon as possible. You can't change this environment, you can only change yourself to adapt to it.